Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of Crossroads Rebuild. Today I am excited because as you can see right over my shoulder I've got the 2014 F-150 here and I am getting ready to go ahead and start tearing this thing down so we can begin the repair process. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of this thing and give you a little more uh, insight into it than I did in the update video recently and then uh, we're going to get it moved over to the driveway because it's going to be a lot easier to work on over there and uh, get to work tearing it down because my buddy Jack, you remember Jack from uh, the Interceptor rebuild, my buddy Jack who is a uh, half frame guy, half magician, and a uh, half artist. Anyway, he is almost ready to get this thing into his shop and start doing some work on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it tore down so we can get it over to him here pretty shortly and I'll let him get to work on it so we can of course start the rebuild process. So let's go ahead and get started with a quick tour of the F-150. All right, well I am gonna go ahead and get our tour started over here on the driver's side which is looking pretty ugly. And I'll tell you as much as I know, which is largely based off of the Carfax report that I pulled on it, and of course, uh, just what I can observe as well. Uh, obviously, this thing was sideswiped over here on the driver's side, and the damage didn't miss anything. It starts over here uh, with the tail light all the way down the side of the bed. We'll get back to that in a minute course down uh, both doors in fact down here you can see where it looks like a tire got up uh, up across it uh, of course took out uh, the running board took out the mirror and then on down through the fender to the headlight so literally from taillight to headlight uh, this thing got sideswiped and it took an awful lot out uh, along the way now let's look real quick over here um, the side of the bed is unfortunate um, I will talk to Jack about that and see if we can save that or if we're going to have to use parts from a donor vehicle. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Uh, and then over here, of course, we got here into, I don't know, what would you call that? The C pillar? Anyway, the back wall uh, of the F-150. Now, it did not take out my rear glass or my front glass, for which I'm grateful. It did blow out both windows on these doors. Not surprising at all. And then obviously these doors got pushed in pretty hard, uh, so they don't open at all. They're jammed in there pretty good. Now, when I was talking to Jack about this the other day, he said, go ahead and tear down the front end, but leave those doors alone. Don't try to get those out of there uh, because I want to pull on it before, uh, before we take those doors off. So today we will not be taking these doors off. I'm gonna wait and let Jack do that, uh, but we'll probably go ahead and pull this tail light out, pull off uh, this running board, and then of course the fender and wrapping our way around the side. So we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is the part right here that I'm the most nervous about. Um, I am hopeful that that can be saved uh, without having to cut too much out, but we'll see. And then of course, I have no idea how bad this B-pillar is back here. Uh, I expect that there's at least some damage. As you can see, these doors uh, don't line up properly. And then of course, it's smashed in there as well. So uh, we'll see how bad that uh, B-pillar is. Hopefully not too bad, and hopefully it can just be pulled straight out and it'll be all right. Uh, that's unfortunate uh, because uh, that is a Ford factory running board and they're not cheap to replace. So uh, we'll talk about some uh, possible uh, options here going forward. So let's go ahead and continue our tour here uh, around the side. Uh, you can see that wheel got messed up in the side swipe as well. And then as the vehicle got side swiped, uh, basically what I can deduce is it then got pushed into something uh, over here on the passenger side. Now everything from the door back is just fine on the passenger side. Those doors work great. There's no damage there, no issues there. Uh, but this side is pretty nasty. In fact, this is really worse than anything going on on the driver's side where the accident appears to have begun. Uh, so obviously we took out the fender and the hood, uh, pretty bad, headlight and all that, into the bumper. Um, that wheel, you can see uh, that I have uh, the spare tire on there, and that is because, well, that wheel uh, was a factory matching wheel. Not only was the tire shredded, but then I took that wheel off and discovered that the wheel itself had been uh, split wide open as well. So that wheel is trash, which, which means I've got two wheels that I'm going to have to replace, but we'll get into that as well. Um, and then, uh, obviously, because this got pushed in so hard, we'll take a closer look at this in a little while, uh, but there's a, a tubular rail that runs through here uh, and down, and uh, that got pretty smashed up. So in my opinion, that's probably one of the worst things. Let me go ahead and get this hood opened up and we'll take a look under the hood as well. All right, looking here under the hood, uh, everything does run. This is a run and drive vehicle. It starts up just fine. It sounds great. No worries there. Uh, I replaced the battery recently. It doesn't fit in there properly because you can see all of this got pushed. Uh, but I did replace the battery because the battery itself not only didn't work, but uh, here where this corner hit the battery, it actually 
broke the battery, split it open, so I'm sure that was dangerous. Uh, so got rid of that. Uh, but anyway, I've got a brand new battery in here so I can start this thing and run it just fine. You can see I have uh, the negative cable unhooked at the moment. And uh, well, obviously this is some of the worst here. As this fender got pushed in, uh, it took out this tube here, uh, which then carried around and pushed on our core support. And I have never seen a radiator condenser uh, in a wave shape, uh, but that one sure is. Um, I think this is a transmission cooler and it looks like it'll be fine. Obviously I'll have to uh, get a new condenser and I honestly cannot tell if our radiator is in bad shape or not. I'm guessing it kind of looks like that, uh, but we'll find out uh, when we take all of this apart. So let's see here. It does look like our reservoir is empty, so I'm guessing that that radiator is split and probably leaked out. Uh, obviously our bumper's trash. We're missing a fog light there, although that one's saved and a few other odds and ends there. So there's a lot here uh, that needs to be disassembled so that we can get down to the damage and see what is gonna have to be replaced. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside and then we'll get this thing moved over to my driveway where we can actually do some work. All right, looking here on the inside, obviously as I pointed out before, both those side windows are blown out, uh, but it did not blow a single airbag. All of my curtain airbags, side airbags, dash airbags, etc., are just fine. I don't know how that, I don't know how that happened, uh, but I'm very thankful that no airbags were blown and it does not have uh, an airbag light in the dash. Uh, in fact, the only um, malfunction light that I have right now is for tire pressure, and that's because I have uh, that spare tire on here. Um, now, other issues in here, obviously I'm gonna have to clean out all the glass. This uh, glove box is broken when I got it. Uh, well, this handle is broken off, so I had to pretty well jam it open uh, to get something out of there. Uh, so I'll have to look at fixing that. Um, and then here in the back, well, it's locked, so I can't really show that to you right now. I'll show that to you later. But here in the back, it's just fine as well. Uh, so, interior is looking pretty good. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna get this thing moved over to my driveway. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is then vacuum out all the glass so that I don't have to uh, shimmy across glass. This is the only way in right now, uh, and I don't like shimmying across the glass. So we're gonna get it cleaned out, vacuumed out, and then we'll start uh, front end disassembly. So let's go ahead and get going. All right, move it over in here carefully. Try not to scratch my butt on the glass. All right. Oh yeah, starts right up, sounds great. Low tire pressure, yep, that makes sense. Clear that out of there, very good. And then uh, that's it, you can see I got a tire pressure light and that's it. So let's go ahead, take this thing over to the driveway. This F-150 wasn't listed as a run and drive, so it was listed as a starts vehicle uh, because of that wheel issue. Um, they weren't driving it anywhere. But again, as soon as I put the spare on there, I was able to drive it just fine. In fact, we even backed it off of uh, the delivery truck, uh, even with that bad wheel. So uh, it is technically run and drive, but that's not how they had it listed. All right, well, here we are. Let's go ahead and get out, get the vacuum, and get this thing cleaned out, and then start disassembly here in the front. Well, I'm gonna go inside and clean myself up in the process of trying to clean the glass out of here so that I don't hurt myself. Yeah, I managed to cut myself. So I'm gonna go inside and get cleaned up so I don't get blood all over the interior and uh, then we'll get back to cleaning up uh, the back of the cab. All right, all the glass is pretty well vacuumed up. I think I'm gonna have to go back and do it again and probably shampoo the carpets. Still sparkles a little bit like glitter, so I'm sure there's small little bitty shards still in there, but the vast majority of it's up, so hopefully I won't be uh, hurting myself again. Um, and uh, these seats 
are clearly going to need to be shampooed anyway. Of course, the whole interior will need a detail uh, when we're all done with this, so I'm not worried about that at all. We got the vast majority of the glass out uh, front and rear, so now the interior is a little bit safer, and I am ready to move on to starting the teardown. All right, teardown time. Well, I'm going to start here in the front and try to get some of the smaller stuff like the headlights and horns and things like that off, then probably work on the bumpers and then work my way down the fenders. Now, the one thing that uh, is going to make it more challenging to get the fenders off, uh, in particular on this side, is because of the way Ford uh, installs a lot of their engine compartment stuff. So a lot of this stuff here is actually clipped down uh, to the inner fenders. So that's gonna make it more challenging to get those out. And then this fender in particular, um, Ford usually has a bolt somewhere in here, uh, right there at the A pillar, which you usually access from inside the door. But as you know, I cannot get those doors open and Jack doesn't want me to try anyway because he wants to pull on it with those doors on. So I'm not sure that I'll be getting that fender off today. I would like to try to get this one off, but uh, we'll have to see how much of a complication that inner fender uh, gives us. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here on the front, start getting most of that stuff pulled off, and then uh, we'll just move from there. So wish me luck and uh, enjoy watching me work. quick update here for you. I've got the headlights out, got the trim there from the top, uh, as well as the horn off. And uh, this was trickier than I was expecting, mostly because of the way things are kind of smashed up. But uh, this uh, trim panel here um, that goes kind of above the bumper, got that out of there. And uh, well, that's a step in the right direction, but boy, it's moving slower than I was expecting. Now, this does give us a little bit of a better look over here at uh, just how kind of gnarly and twisted that uh, part of the frame is, so yay for that. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna move on to try and get this bumper off of here, and uh, we'll just see how that goes and keep moving from there. Wish me luck. Another quick status update here. I now have that fender off. Um, there is in fact a screw that has to come out from inside the door as I suspected. Uh, so I will not be attempting to get that fender off uh, until it's over at Jack's place. Um, obviously having this fender off does expose uh, the extent of uh, the twisting and pushing. You can see we've got a pretty gnarly twist here uh, that comes in and of course pushes all of that that way as well. Uh, so there's quite a bit that's gonna have to come off of here uh, and be replaced. I am gonna go ahead and leave the core support in place for the time being, uh, which means also the radiator and condenser and all of that, and uh, wait until we get it to Jack's because uh, sometimes he likes to pull this stuff uh, before things are disconnected so things will move together. Uh, at the very least, it allows him to uh, see what he's working with. So I think the last thing I'm gonna do here before uh, I call it done, um, before I take it to Jack's, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the hood off and maybe go ahead and remove that bad tail light and uh, this um, side step. Just a few odds and ends that I can get off of there. And then uh, we'll probably call it done from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on this hood now and then uh, move on from there.
All right, another update here. So uh, Jack actually sw uh, swung by and I was talking to him about not being able to get this fender off uh, because of the screw inside the door. And he said, well, this fender's trashed anyway, right? Go ahead and cut it off. So what I've done, and I'm gonna try here in a second, I've gone ahead and unbolted everything that I can. And uh, it's obviously pretty loose. The only thing holding, holding it on at this point is, uh, you can see inside there, there's, you know, this foam. Ford is fond of foaming uh, the fender to the firewall, the inner, inner structure anyway. There's now also one screw, that one screw uh, that is inside the door. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to slice that up just a little bit so that it's uh, turning loose. And um, I guess just kind of cut that corner off so that uh, I can remove this fender. And uh, that's one less thing we gotta worry about. So have the hood off, have all that done over there. We'll show you that again in a minute. And uh, just one bolt and some foam holding this fender on at this point. So I'm gonna see if I can't get this thing to turn loose. Uh, wish me luck. As you could probably see, my sawzall was just a little too big to get in there. And uh, so I was able to pull it far enough away to get a really tiny hand wrench in and get that out. So there's that. I'm gonna try to remember, remove that little uh, inner piece right there that's foamed in and then uh, move on to the running board. Well, I forgot to roll the camera, but as you can see, I got the running board off. Wasn't that big a deal. It's two 10 millimeters that hold it to each of those brackets. Those brackets will come off with 13 mils, but they don't look damaged. So I'm gonna leave them there for the time being. We can take them off later if we need to. So there's that off. And now I'm going to move on here to the tail light and take it out. The last thing I'm going to do before I call this thing done as far as teardown goes is I'm going to go ahead and remove this plastic. It is going to live in my garage until I'm able to get it over to Jack's, which will be pretty soon. Uh, so I'm just looking forward to having that off so it'll look a little bit better. So I think that's where we'll end for today. There we go. I mean, I know it doesn't look good, but it looks better without that stuff. <laughs> Well, all right, guys and gals, there it is. The teardown is complete. First episode on the F-150 is in the books. So what's next? Well, Jack actually came over and took a look at this thing while I was tearing it down. And uh, he did help me uh, realize that I could in fact get this fender off. So that fender is off. And uh, he is finishing up a project for a friend of mine right now. And uh, that vehicle will be done in a couple of days and then there'll be room to move this in. However, just because we'll be moving it over into Jack's shop doesn't mean that we'll have it back quickly. Uh, first of all, there's still some exploratory surgery to do over here and figure out just how bad this is and what's gonna have to happen. Uh, and then secondly, um, he is also getting ready. Uh, he has scheduled to paint a classic truck. I think it's a 1960 Chevrolet or something like that. Anyway, really cool truck. Uh, he's been working on that for a long time. I'm excited to see that one done. Maybe I'll show you a sneak peek of it. In any case, it is scheduled to come into his shop for paint uh, here probably the end of next week. So it'll probably be a little while though before we're able to actually get uh, the framework going on this thing. But don't worry, even though that'll be a pause on the content on the F-150 for a little while, of course, I have plenty of other projects coming as you saw in my recent update. I've got uh, the Civic to get ready for uh, a, a friend who wants to buy that. I've got the Jag project to work on. And of course, I still need to wrap up uh, the Interceptor. So that's probably what will be coming next is actually another episode on the Interceptor. So with all that being said, I'm so excited to have this progress done on the F-150. It is the first step toward getting this thing back on the road. And uh, we'll have more content coming on it just as fast as possible. But until then, stay tuned for project work coming on the Jag, the Civic, and of course the Interceptor as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the enthusiasm you guys have had uh, with me getting the uh, fresh content coming back to the channel. I'm excited about that. And of course, I've got more things in the works than even that you've seen. So stay tuned for that as well. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and like, uh, subscribe if you haven't, and click the bell so you can be notified each time I upload a new episode. And of course, go ahead and drop me a comment below and tell me what you think about the F-150. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.